Imagine tagging a shark to study its habits, only to find out it has become prey itself. This is more detail on the story of a tagged poor beagle shark and its unexpected fate. I'm John Riven and I make films on the sea, including working on both series of Blue Planet. In October 2020, a team of researchers led by Dr. Brooke Anderson tagged a pregnant poor beagle shark off the coast of Cape Cod, not that far off Nantucket Island, Massachusetts. Their goal? To track her movements and identify crucial habitats for conservation efforts. For five months, the shark's tag accumulated its data, showing her routine dives and surface swims. It can only transmit this when it's at the surface because the signal to the satellite doesn't work underwater and the poor beagle was underwater most of the time. But then in spring 2021, something strange happened. The tag, which was supposed to stay attached for much longer, suddenly surfaced and started transmitting data. The scientists were puzzled. What could have caused this abrupt change? So what is a poor beagle? It's a member of the mackerel sharks, or laminiforms, and one of the closest living relatives to the great white shark. One explanation for its name is that it has a shape of a porpoise and the hunting sense of a beagle, poor beagle. It's not that dangerous to humans. Eating fish and squid, and at a maximum of 12 feet and 500 pounds, is less than two thirds the size of the 20 foot great white shark. When the poor beagle team received the data, they noticed a drastic shift in the shark's diving patterns and a consistent temperature reading which didn't match the water column in the last week or so. It was clear that something unusual had happened. Tagging these sharks is an art, but one that has been largely mastered, and it's rare that capturing them for tagging affects or kills the shark. So that wasn't the reason the shark died. Besides, there was this unusual pattern of temperature data that appeared in the last week or so of the tagging before it came to the surface. The tag showed quite a big rise in temperature even at depth, where it's normally much colder, on average 5 centigrade or 40 Fahrenheit above the surrounding water. This suggested that the tag was now inside something, something warm, maybe a stomach. This is the temperature chart shown in the science paper from the 23rd to the 29th of March 2021. The temperatures become much higher, they're the red and yellow lines, and the depth range bigger than before, including surfacing, which the poor beagle didn't do much before it was caught by this big predator. It was obviously a predator large enough to eat a poor beagle up to 12 feet, itself an awesome predator of large fish. But who could have done it? The team considered several suspects, the shortfin mako shark, the orca, and the great white shark. All three are known to occur in the waters of the northwest coast of the USA. After analysing the data, the scientists concluded that a great white shark was the most likely culprit. The temperatures for an orca or killer whale were not high enough from the tags. They would have been much higher if it had been inside an orca, which, as you know, is, is a, a marine mammal with much higher body temperatures in the range of about 37 centigrade or 100 Fahrenheit. A great white shark is a fish, of course, but it does have some ability to raise its body temperature by diverting heat from its muscles to areas like the brain and the stomach. So it's called partly warm-blooded or endothermic and a, has a raised brain temperature for instance but it also can increase its stomach temperature which speeds up digestion and that explains why the tag was about 5 centigrade or 40 Fahrenheit higher than it should have been otherwise and the telltale clue that the tag was inside a shark. What about the short fin makos? Well short fin makos are also formidable predators and they could take something as big as a poor beagle but they've got a different dive pattern to the one that was seen, much more erratic, um, and they don't usually dive as deep as, as the tag was showing. So it probably wasn't a mako. But does the pattern of a great white shark coincide exactly with that of the poor beagle off the northwest coast of the USA? For the first few months, the poor beagle stayed in relatively shallow water, but then in January, it heads out over the continental shelf into the deep water of the Sargasso Sea towards Bermuda.
a place perhaps where more squid are likely to hang out in the deeper water. And then at the end of March, it was eaten just south of Bermuda. So did a great white track it down in this deep water? It seems possible because data from tagging great whites shows that although they hug the coast most of the year, in the winter and in the spring, they've been discovered in deep water and in a place not far south of Bermuda. And this tag came off the animal at the end of the spring. So it's possible it fatally crossed paths with a great white and met its untimely end there off Bermuda. This discovery is surprising because it challenges our understanding of the whole food web. Poor beagle sharks are top predators. They're pretty big. And seeing one fall prey to another shark, even if it is perhaps twice the size, is unusual, to say the least. Or, or it's unusual at least as far as we know, because there's not really enough data. Tagging is becoming more sophisticated, with the units lighter and cheaper. So that means that hopefully in the future we can get more information. The loss of a pregnant poor beagle shark is significant because it impacts an already vulnerable population. Since the peak of fishing for poor beagles in 1947, when it was estimated 6,000 tonnes were taken, it is now a protected fish, but they are still only at about 10% of their previous population when nobody was doing any fishing for them. Worldwide, over a thousand tonnes of poor beagle are still taken for their fins and flesh, which is thought not to be sustainable in the long term. So their worldwide population will decline if we don't stop that. This finding is really interesting and it sheds light on the complex interactions within the oceans, highlighting other threats to the poor beagle population in addition to overfishing. And it also shows the importance of continued research for conservation so we know how to keep their populations 